1324 and act amending title 16 chapter 4 article 4 errors on our vice by adding section 16-407.04 amending section 16-673 errors on our vice to relating to conduct of elections the committee on rules recommends that the following bills are proper consideration as 1324 and board and peters and chairman mr president your committee on elections have a consideration as 1324 relating to images voter list records contests or submits the following report your committee recommends that the bill be passed and wendy rogers chairman senator bennett Mr. Chair, I move with the Committee of the Whole Rise report to give Senate Bill 1324 a due pass recommendation. Excellent. Uh, the reader will read the Bennett floor amendment number one. I move the following amendment to Senate Bill 1324, sign Ken Bennett. Senator Bennett. Mr. Chair, I move the Bennett floor amendment number one be adopted to the bill. Brief explanation. Yes, it uh, requires that for precincts and precinct splits fewer than 25 voters, the county recorder preparing the registered voter list, the uh, and the county recorder or other officer in charge of elections preparing the ballot images and cast vote record to include only the number of voters and the number of ballot images to protect the confidentiality of those voters in very small precincts and precinct splits. Awesome. Okay, perfect. Uh, members, question for you is the Bennett number four, one floor amendment to Senate Bill 1324. Those in favor vote aye. Aye. Opposed vote no. Appears the ayes have it, they have it so ordered. Read to read the Bennett number two floor amendment. I move the following amendment to Senate Bill 1324, sign Ken Bennett. Senator Bennett. Mr. Chair, I move the Bennett number two floor amendment be adopted to the bill. Please. All right. Uh, uh, explanation. Brief explanation. Uh, prohibits the Secretary of State, County Recorder, or other officer in charge of elections from altering or adding any voter data as part of their security measures in implementing the requirements related to voter lists and ballot images. It's uh, agreed to by the Secretary of State, so appreciate his cooperation. Excellent. Uh, members, you've heard that explanation from Senator Bennett. Any further discussion? Seeing none, those in favor of the measure vote aye. Aye. Opposed vote no. Appears the ayes have it do have it so ordered. The reader read the Marsh floor amendment. I move the following amendment to Senate Bill 1324, signed Christine Marsh. All right. Uh, Senator Marsh. Uh, thank you. Uh, this amendment creates. You have to move the amendment first. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I move the Marsh Floor Amendment to 1324 be adopted. Excellent. Uh, brief explanation. Uh, yeah, this creates a, an electronic portal so that ballot images wouldn't just be published, and it requires that the person requesting access to those materials um, actually create a login and has to, they have to provide information, name, address, phone number, that sort of thing, proof of identity. Uh, and it, ha it does a number of things, but it also uh, classifies it as a felony if anybody takes any portion of the voter list and changes it, alters it, or um, uses it for commercial purposes, et cetera. Okay. Member, uh, Senator Bennett. Um, Mr. Chair, I want to thank the sponsor of the floor amendment, Senator Marsh, and I stand in support of the amendment. It is a friendly amendment. Okay. Members, you've heard... The, uh, the motion, uh, seeing no further discussion, those in favor vote aye. Opposed vote no. It appears the ayes have it, do have it, so ordered. Senator Bennett, the bill is met. Mr. Chair, I move when the committee of the whole rise report to give Senate Bill 1324 as amended to do pass recommendation. All right. Uh, Senator Sunderation. Thank you, Mr. President Pro Tem. Uh, will the sponsor stand for some questions? Please. Yes. Thank you. He does. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, also Senator. Um, so I, and I know that there have been um, a, a few go-arounds with, with the, this bill, and I know intentions are the best uh, as to providing information to resolve questions that linger in, in, uh, in people's minds. I just, you know, we've seen candidates in the last two cycles Misconstrue, misconstrue data available to them and make false claims to refuse to admit defeat. So won't having additional data like ballot images, cast vote records available to them before the county and state canvases further fuel attempts to claim victory by defeated candidates? Senator Ben. Mr. Chair, Senator Sunderation, first of all, um, Nothing in this bill requires the release of this information before the county canvas. I worked very closely with the counties. Uh, they didn't want anything, uh, any additional burdens put on them between the election and the county canvas. So there's nothing in this bill that causes them any additional work during that time. It's after the county canvas that they are to release this information. Um, 
I think one of the reasons we have seen continued lawsuits and appeals and appeals and appeals is because this information is not available to candidates, and it should be, so that they can see for their own eyes. Did I really lose? Um, for example, the, the total data of votes in the state would indicate that the, the Republican candidate for governor in 2022 received 120,000 fewer votes than the Republican candidate for state treasurer. Uh, some in my party find that hard to believe. Um, the only way to <laughs> know whether it's true or not is to release the ballot images so that candidates, their campaigns, their legal teams, whoever, can see the data. Uh, I was called as a special witness in the Hamaday lawsuit, uh, who lost, <laughs> as you might recall, a statewide election by initially 511 votes, which triggered a statewide recount, and that changed to 280 votes. Uh, Hamaday's, uh, or candidate Hamaday's legal team was very concerned about whether there were really approximately 75,000 ballots statewide where voters chose neither him or the Democrat nominee who was eventually elected uh, Attorney General Mays. Um, I was disappointed that a Mojave County Superior Court judge did not allow his campaign the ballot images and the cast vote record that would have clearly shown to, to them that there were, or maybe there weren't, but I believe it would have shown clearly that there were approximately 75,000 voters in Arizona who did not indicate a choice between either of the major two-party candidates in that race. So every time there has been a major contest of elections, one of the frustrations of those making the contest to the courts is that the courts are <laughs> dismissing these lawsuits because they don't have any evidence to either prove or disprove what they're alleging, and this bill will provide that evidence so that both sides can see, in the one case, did she really get 120,000 fewer votes than a, re a fellow Republican running for state treasurer? That is unusual, but that's what the total numbers show us, and if the ballot images and the cast vote record are released, everyone can know what the truth is. Thank you, more a follow up, Mr. Chair. Please. Thank you. Um, thank you, Senator, and thanks for the, the clarification that it would be after county canvases, but it would still be before state certification, and, and I think that's where uh, some of the concerns uh, that I have come from. And following from your uh, explanation just now, um, you know, we st those, those court hearings that have continued to follow in in these cases come after after there was made more more data available and more evidence available and yet those court hearings persist my concern and my worry and I, my question is won't won't making all of this data available to members of the public without you know, perhaps the requisite data analysis or ability to pro to understand what is what the data is that's being made available, simply fuel fuel more and more uh, of that misinformation and and analysis to you know home analysis right home audits that will continue to uh, just lead to more and more of these court challenges, especially pre certification. Mr. Chair, Senator, Senator, I respectfully believe with all my heart that this will do exactly the opposite. The reason these appeals and the court cases are filed in the first place is because the candidates don't have this, this data. They don't have the level of detail to see that the total numbers of how many did or didn't vote for them or how many fewer votes they got than another Republican running statewide in the same race, that data is not available. It's only available in totals on what's called the statement of votes cast in the normal canvas of these elections. Uh, and the reason they continue to file appeals is trying to get at the data 
to see if they can prove or disprove what they believe or think might have happened. And the answer to confidence in our elections, more than anything else, is one word, transparency. And as leaders of this state, we should not fear transparency. Candidates, whether they're winners or losers, <laughs> should not fear transparency. County election officials and state election officials should not fear transparency. If things were done right in the election, there's no need to fear that detailed information being released so that people can verify that, yes, everyone who, this bill, members, is about four pieces of data. Before the election, release the list of who's eligible to vote in the election. After the election, after the canvas, after the county canvas, release the list of who voted in the election. Everyone on the who voted list should be, and I believe will be, <laughs> on the was eligible to vote list. The third piece of data is the ballot images. There should be one ballot image, no more, no less, for everyone on the who voted list. And then the fourth piece of data is the cast vote record, which is a spreadsheet. And the spre that's the spreadsheet where the votes from individual anonymous ballots, we don't know whose ballot is whom, and the amendments that are put, being put on today will make sure that in very small precincts or precinct splits, as they're called, that those, the names of those voters and their ballot images are not disclosed so that nobody's vote can be compromised as far as its confidentiality. But if you have the ballot images and the cast vote record, you can go to uh, ballot image number 692 and see that there's a vote for Smith and Jones and Garcia. And you can go to row 692 of the cast vote record and see that the system recorded a vote for Smith and Jones and Garcia. And then you can add up the columns for Smith and Jones and Garcia and see that Garcia got 8,952 votes and that's what the county reported to us in the official canvas that they got. Everything adds up. It protects the confidentiality of voters. It makes a, I believe, a very good change as recommended by Senator Marsh to not post these voter lists on county websites but to do it through a secure portal where the applicant has to apply for it provide their information, sign an attestation that they will not abuse it or use it for commercial purposes and all of that. So at every step of the process, I've tried to address every concern. Uh, my most recent uh, communication from the counties is that by addressing, as the Bennett number two floor, no, Bennett number one floor amendment addressed today, by addressing the small precincts and precinct splits, I believe within another day or two, the, the Association of Counties will come to at least neutral on the bill, whereas to up until now they've been opposed because of the concern of releasing any identifying data of voters in these very small precincts. If you've got a precinct with two or three people in it, and only one of those two or three people are a libertarian, you can find the libertarian ballot from that precinct and say, well, that's how John voted. That has been taken care of with the Bennett number one floor amendment. So there will be no risk of identifying how someone voted. And the data that this allows is simply transparency. And if, if, there, are, if there are no errors, then there's nothing to hide. And I believe that this will respectfully have exactly opposite of the effect that you are legitimately concerned about, which is furthering these contestations of elections. I think this is going to reduce the contestation of elections by giving, especially losing candidates, enough information and detail to know that they really lost the election. When I was elected in my very first office <laughs> to the Prescott City Council in 1984, I got the most votes. The second uh, person was elected. The third person lost by three votes. <laughs> it's very hard when you lose by just three votes. We had a race in the Arizona legislature about 28 years ago. Three people running for two seats in a legislative house district. 
The top person had the most votes. The second and third person were tied. You recount when there's a tie, it was tied a second time. You recount a third time, it was tied a second time. Arizona statute says if it's tied three times, you decide it by a game of chance. Then Speaker of the House Jane Hull decided they were going to play five-card stud. <laughs> she sent a staffer down to Walmart or somewhere, got a brand-new deck of cards, shuffled the cards, passed out five cards to each candidate. One had a pair of eights and the other had a queen high. Pair of eights beat the queen high. That person was elected. One vote, or actually a game of chance, they were tied. Close elections, we must have enough transparency to show the winner and, even more importantly, the loser, that we added up everything correctly and you can believe the results. I think it will have exactly opposite of the impact that you're concerned with, but I respect immensely your concern. And a, if a, a follow-up, if I may. Uh, just, please. Just because I do uh, very much want to appreciate the, the work that Senator Bennett has done to address many stakeholder concerns or try to at least get that closer to resolved. Um, and perhaps we will be in a position to agree to disagree on that the value of transparency in particular when it's pre-certification, because as we saw in the elections committee where uh, some of the presenting groups had access that were not available to the public, but that they had received as the result of data produced through lawsuits, um, that sometimes the kind of level of detail here can still be misconstrued, can still be analyzed without we, we full. We do need to get to a question. And there. the question would be, would be, how do we prevent that? How, how, how Are we so sure that, that we will be preventing that kind of um, you know, with with the detail presented, is it is it so easy to simply add up the totals, or will we see, you know, the home audits conducted where yeah. they look at all this trove of information and and maybe maybe um, you know, innocently come to kind of conclusions that further these uh, concerns about the security of our elections? Mr. Chair, uh, Senator, I don't think home audits are going to solve this problem. But this level of detailed data um, will allow significant organizations, uh, maybe the press, maybe state uh, and, or county political parties who can raise the money to pay for uh, companies who have software already available to take the ballot images that were tabulated in the initial election and run them through an independent tabulation this technology already exists. There's four states, members, that already do this. Maryland, Fl uh, Florida, South Carolina, and I think the other one is Maine. Um, they have some process of releasing the ballot images and tabulating those ballot images on an election management system and software uh, provider that is different than what the counties do. Maryland does exactly what Arizona does. Maryland lets the counties, I think Maryland has 46 counties, we've got 15. Maryland lets their counties choose which election company's software and system they're going to use to tabulate each election in, that, in each county. But then the state has a contract that after that's happened, they take the ballot images and run them through an independent second tabulation to just verify and you get a very detailed report. Uh, Florida did it recently. Out of 15 million votes in Florida, the differences between the first tabulation and the second tabulation was about 650. And that was all of the races combined. In most races in Florida, the variance between the initial count that the counties had done and the second tabulation that the state did was usually with when one or two votes statewide for a race. And so I don't believe that this will be solved by people at home doing this, but you'll have major uh, organizations in the media, you'll have state or county parties, you'll have organizations like have existed down in Tucson for 20 years in Arizona, um, Audit USA, 
there are organizations that are rapidly coming together to be able to verify elections, and there's companies that are used by these other four states to do exactly what this bill will eventually enable. So, so I appreciate your concern about home audits. No, the typical person at home is not going to have <laughs> enough storage capacity in their PC, in their den, uh, to download uh, millions of ballot images and the cast vote record and all the voter files and things like that. But there will be organizations within the state, universities perhaps, the media and others that I've mentioned, who will have the capability of running those ballot images through an independent tabulation uh, system and confirming, as I believe they will, that the election was done right. And then the candidates can participate in funding that if they want, but at least they'll have the data to check. Right now they, uh, they don't have the data. And I think this will reduce the contestations, not further them or increase them. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I'll just comment. If Please. Sorry. OK, thank you. Um, so very much appreciate the sponsors having answered my questions. And um, uh, I, I will just point out that I think uh, my understanding is that the other states mentioned are not quite in the same way. And perhaps we'll, we'll touch on that a little more. but. Um, that uh, that each of the states kind of make either ballot images available as a public record but not published or that they allow that they have allowed the posting of the ballots but not have have not yet begun um, so that's the that's the case in Florida and Georgia um, and that in Maryland uh, it's the ballots are sent to a, a third party to conduct a private audit uh, with a small fraction of ballots um, and that in Colorado, the ballots are made available on request as digital images after redacting identifying markings after the canvas, after the certification. So I think some significant differences that those states have. And, um, and finally, my, my final comment is that um, I'm, I appreciate uh, the, the sponsor's optimism, um, but having seen the last few years of, of challenges and, um, and, uh, and you know, essentially the, the conspiracy theories that have led to many of the presentations um, that I, I remain uh, skeptical. <laughs> okay. Well, we have a couple others in the queue. So, Senator Hernandez. Thank you, Mr. President Pro Temp. Um, will the sponsor yield to a question? Sure. Please. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Bennett, I wholeheartedly appreciate your intent and and I know that your heart is in the right place on trying to bring solutions right to elections um, my biggest concern is around the unaltered images being posted um, especially before the statewide certification and I think that's a concern that really lies with a lot of groups um, besides myself with a lot of individuals um, if the unaltered images are posted Right, along with the cast record, my concern is that you could, by process of elimination, still somehow risk the privacy of that vote. And I'm all one for transparency, believe me. I, I fully supportive of transpa transparent measures, but that is the concern. Um, so can you address or speak to those concerns? Sure. Senator Beth. Uh, Mr. Chair and uh, Senator, the, the ballot images and the cast vote record, either individually or combined, do not allow you to, I, to tie any ballot back to any particular voter. Uh, ballots are usually reported by the counties in what's called the statement of vote casts um, by precincts. The concern, the only concern that I think is legitimate as to being able to identify an individual voter is in small precincts, or as I mentioned, what are called precinct splits, uh, where part of a precinct is in one school district or street improvement district, and a part of it is in another, and then you have, you're down to just a handful of voters, and one of them, them is Libertarian or Green Party, and all of a sudden we know who the one is. And that's why the amendment today will require that the counties uh, do not publish the images of those ballots but simply identify the total number of ballots that are in these small precincts. Having solved that issue with the amendment number one today, there's no way, there's nothing on a cast vote record 
that ties back to an individual voter. There's nothing on a ballot image that ties back to a specific voter. The only thing that ties back to a specific voter is the envelope that had your name on it so that it could be mailed to you and mailed back. Um, but once that envelope, after signature checking, is separated from the ballot, uh, if you're in a precinct with 5,000 other voters, your ballot is exactly the same as all other 5,000 people in that precinct. And there's no way to tell. Now, if, if, if there's some voters that need to have some education <laughs> over the next cycle or two, that please don't write your name on the ballot uh, because the ballot images are going to be public. Or if we need to go the route of what some other states do that counties identify in rare cases where voters do that, uh, I think you're going to have voters actually want <laughs> to somehow identify their ballot because then they can see that the votes on that ballot were recorded correctly in the cast vote record. But for anyone who wants anonymity, and that's guaranteed by the Arizona Constitution, there's nothing in the cast vote record or the ballot images, especially now that we've excluded precinct or precinct splits less than 25 people. And if that needs to be raised to 50 in the House, I'm happy to do so. I think um, we ha originally had it as 10. Uh, there was concern that that wasn't high enough. Colorado was mentioned. Colorado uses 25. I'm happy to go to 50. We're not trying to identify how any one person voted. We just want to make sure that the number of ballots matches the number of voters and that the spreadsheet on which they were added up matches with the ballot images. So I don't believe that there's any way now to reverse engineer back to how someone individually voted. Mr. Chair. Senator Thomas. Thank you. Um, I, I hear you. However, there's ballots that have write-in candidate options, right? And we have voters that will write in their own name or write in a family, a family member's name. And so while I, I know that you're not trying to actively um, put voters information right to be able to tie the ballot to the to the vote or to their information on the cast record um, that happens people write in their own name on write-in candidate options or a family member's name so this would allow for because unaltered images of the ballot are posted and a voter writes in their own name or a family mem member's name that could be tied back no well Ma uh, mr. chair uh, I probably will have to have a conversation with my mother if this bill passes because whenever she's in doubt in any race, including the U.S. presidential race, she writes in Ken Bennett. Yeah. Uh, but p people may see that and think, oh, that must be Ken Bennett's ballot, but it's not. Um, state law already allows any Arizona voter who wants to take a photo of their ballot and post it on <laughs> Facebook or Twitter or wherever they want to put it, they can do that. And as I said earlier, we may need some additional voter education to remind voters, as we have passed bills this year and previously, reminding voters that they're not supposed to be taking in ballots other than their, their own ballot, a family member, member of their household, or somebody that they're a caregiver for. There's lots of voter education that happens as we try to make elections better in this state. And so um, maybe there's a way, as this bill moves over to the House, to address those rare situations where somebody, the name will probably see that we have seen, when I was Secretary of State, usually the, the third highest vote getter in most races in Arizona is, anyone want to guess? Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I'm serious. No, I know. I believe you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And Donald Duck is fourth. Um, so, yeah, there, there's going to be things that voters write on their ballot. But uh, if somebody writes Ana Hernandez on a ballot, uh, on a write-in for President of the United States, that doesn't mean it's Ana Hernandez's ballot. I mean, it might be. <laughs> <laughs> might be. But that's up to you. Um, Mr. Chair, one last question. Please. Um, I know you mentioned the four states that... Uh, have this sort of uh, measures in place, but none of those four states have this entire package that you're uh, bringing forth in legislation, um, from my understanding. Uh, Colorado, 
ballots are made available upon request as digital images after the redaction of identifying markings and after the canvas. And two of their counties pilot posting those ballots far after certification. Um, Maryland, in Maryland, ballots are sent to a third party to run a private audit um, and a public portal posts a small fraction of ballots based on categories in the audit. Um, Georgia, the, that law did pass but has not begun the pilot and in Florida, ballot images are public record only and not published on a website. So my question is why are we wanting to bring this big of our, this type of legislation here um, when we don't know if any of these are going to be measures that will really address the lack of confidence in our elections. Mr. Chair and Senator, as I described earlier to the question, uh, right now, if a candidate is informed that they've narrowly lost an election, uh, they can't get ballot images. They it's very difficult to get the cast vote record quickly enough to be able to see, does it look right? If there's nothing to hide in our elections, then we shouldn't have any hesitation to put the information out there. The act of voting is secret. The act of counting our elections should be very public. We allow and require, in fact, observers to be there to watch all of these different processes occur. Um, you're correct. This, this bill, even with today's amendments, does not exactly mirror what happens in any one of these four states. And I think you've correctly described what does happen in these states. Um, but whatever happens in whatever state, they are using this type of information that is made public by state statutes in those states that says these are either public data um, that you can apply to get, or as you said, in one of the states, um, it has to be requested by the voter, which to me is the application process that Senator Marsh's amendment put in here in the first place. Yeah. And to me, it's very telling that a former Republican Secretary of State of this state and the current Democrat Secretary of State of this state is supporting a bill that increases transparency in our elections, and both of us believe strongly that this will diminish the kinds of contestations and appeals and court filings and things because most of the time those are being done right now without the data that they need. They're making suppositions, they are guessing, they're wondering, they're doing all kinds of things, most of which result in the courts dismissing most of their claims. As we just heard yesterday, the uh, Supreme Court denied six of the seven claims of the Lake campaign, um, and, but did say that the lower court should not have summarily dismissed the opportunity for that campaign to check the signatures on the envelopes. This doesn't have anything to do with envelope signature checking. So this has, this is not for any one of the court cases that has recently or is in, or currently is in the court process in Arizona. Um, but the data that this makes available uh, could be used in one of the ways that you have, I think, correctly identified happens in these other states. But if you don't have the data available in the first place, we can't even make those determinations or the people that have lost these races can't, can't understand or can't verify for themselves that the election was done correctly. And I spent an hour yesterday with the uh, founder of the company that does most of these third party verifications in these other four states. And he says, since these states have started allowing winners and losers of elections to see the data, to see the ballot images, to see how questionable votes were adjudicated, to see the cast vote record and whether those two align up. He says, there have not been any more contestations of races in the, in the, Kate, in the states where uh, this, date, this type of data is used to allow people to verify the integrity of an election. So I think it 
uh, is a step forward. And I guess I would say, I think it was Einstein said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. If you and I and many are tired <laughs> of the continual questions about whether the election was done right or not, then let's not do anything and it'll just keep happening. <laughs> We've got to do something. If we, if we uh, want a different result, I think we have to do something different than what exists right now. And you have the current Secretary of State and myself strongly believing that this is a step forward. Might not be perfect, but rarely do we do anything down here that's perfect. <laughs> we, we agree there. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chair. Thank you. Senator Mendez. Thank you, Mr. President Pro Tem. I rise uh, to for ask the sponsor for questions. Sure. Sure, why not? Thank you. Yeah, why not? Um, so, uh, Senator Bennett, as you can tell from the previous lines of questionings, we did a little research into the other examples of the states that, uh, that we were told had similar programs. Um, and, and we reached out to, I guess you would say, sister stakeholders you know, representatives of other groups in, in other states to, to talk with them. And they, they were appalled that their limited programs were being used to justify the overreach and extreme nature of, of this proposal. Uh, as you can tell, the, 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 the proposals were, the other programs were described earlier and they are nowhere near as extensive as, as this proposal. Uh, we probably wouldn't be spending so much time on, on this if it was any of the other limited number of proposals. Um, but so all these concerns force me to question specifically the changes to the challenge period. Uh, there are now five days between when some of this information is published and then the, the deadline to submit an elections contest. And, and I guess, how do we expect a person or, or, or even an organization to conduct a reputable audit of the election results in, in five days? I mean, I, I just can't rationalize these this choice. I mean, there seems they these you know the way that our program is put together and how it differs from all the other states. That there seems this seems to just only allow for extra time so that the ballot images can be used specifically for challenges. I mean, based on your your testimony just earlier, you it seems that the goal is to provide this information prior to certification, specifically for candidates to to decide whether or not to challenge an election to use this information. Uh, simply for, for, to justify lawsuits. And I just, uh, uh, help me explain why ours has to be so different than the other states. Senator Bennett. Mr. Chair, Senator, um, originally we wanted the counties to release this data when they do their certification so that there would be no change to the five-day period which already exists in state statute that allows someone to challenge that certification or canvas as we call it. The counties specifically requested, don't give us any more duties to do between the election and the canvas. Give us 48 hours after we've done the canvas to release this information, which we did. 48 hours is two days, and so we simply moved the, the contest period to five days after that two days. So. We're not making any change. Currently in state law, there's five days after the canvas to contest the election. The counties would release this data within 48 hours after, and then you still have a five-day contest period. So we're not trying to expand the contest in any way. We're just trying to give candidates the data that they need to prove to themselves, mostly in my opinion, that the election was done correctly and they lost. Mr. Speaker, Pro Tem, uh, Senator Mendes. the question, yeah, to that point. Um, so I, I appreciate the concern for the counties and you know giving them uh, a little of what they asked for, but it still, it still doesn't reassure me that a proper audit is gonna happen within five days. And it still does not in any way explain why all of this has to happen pre-certification. You, 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 we have not, I haven't heard any, anything justify why this has to happen pre-certification. Uh, Mr. Chair, Senator, Senator there's two 
certifications that occur in Arizona. And it's a misnomer that is widely misunderstood by most of our voters. I think maybe even <laughs> within the two bodies that make the laws for this state. We don't have, when we have an election in Arizona, we don't have an election in Arizona. We have 15 individual elections. Each county conducts their election. And a certain number of days after the election, each county board of supervisors is required to canvass or certify the results of the election in that county. We did not want to, enter, as I just explained, we, we, at the request of the counties, we did not want to add any burden to what they have to do between the conduct of the election and the certification. Once the counties certify each of the elections, they send that data to the Secretary of State's office. All the Secretary of State does is add up the numbers for 15 counties to come up with a statewide total. There's no additional verification or huge amount of work that's done between the county certifications and the Secretary of State's certification of the statewide results about a month later. So we're not adding any burden uh, to them as well. The current Secretary of State, I as a former one, believe that providing this information will give, especially losing candidates, the information they cannot get right now. And therefore, they're filing these lawsuits alleging that I poss couldn't possibly have lost or I couldn't possibly have, have got this fewer votes than somebody else running for a statewide office in my party or there couldn't possibly have been 75,000 voter, 75, voters statewide that didn't pick either one of us. They can't get this information now, and so they're filing these lawsuits, and they're appealing the dismissals of those lawsuits because they don't have this data. And so we're not, we're not extending the contest period. We're not doing anything prior to the, the critical certification, which happens in each of the 15 counties. Uh, the Secretary of State has complete confidence that he can make, he can receive this data from the 15 counties, make it available on a secure portal, only provide it to those that request it. That was one of the characteristics described by one of our other two colleagues as what happens in one or two of the other four states that does something similar to this. It's done by request of a voter. So we've switched everything over to that instead of posting the voter lists and everything on, on county websites. So we're not interrupting the canvas and we're not extending the contest period other than the 48 hours that the counties wanted to be able to post this and we're still giving people five days to look at the data and I think it's going to reduce the number of lawsuits. Mr. Speaker, for the time, I, I have another question. Oh, please. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Senator Bennett, thank you. Um, so if, if, the, if the proposal and its goal is just to help losers accept reality, then nothing in your previous answer precludes giving them this information after the certification. It could work the same way. If they just have to accept reality, it doesn't matter Mr. when. Mr. Chair, are you talking about you mean after the statewide certification? Yeah. So, I mean. Would, it, it, would you support it, the bill if, Mr. Chair, would you support the bill if, the mechanism we're putting in after the county certification was simply moved to the statewide certification? It, Mr. Chair, Mr. Spe Mr. Uh, Speaker Pro Tem, uh, President Pro Tem and yes. Senate, Senator Bennett, it would be a totally different bill that I believe me and my colleagues would, would have less heartburn burn over and might be able to, to, to speak to my stakeholders and have a, a more productive conversation. But in order for us to have a productive conversation here, I, I will move on from, from this line of questioning to, to a second question. It was touched upon by my colleagues, uh, uh, the potential, the, the real potential for, for voter intimidation. But uh, I, I want to move beyond the, the ballot images and consider. Did you say voter, in, Mr. Chair, did you say voter intimidation? I hadn't heard voter intimidation. Voter, voter intimidation is the topic I want to move on to. Okay, I'm yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's just reset here. Yeah. You're asking questions still. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Right. I just want to make sure the audience was awake. So. Yeah. <laughs> so members, uh, we saw in previous election cycles the that unofficial groups were running around our neighborhoods, going door to door, demanding to know how how people voted, which resulted in threats of legal action by the Department of Justice over you know real concerns for for voter intimidation. 
But these groups did all of that with so much far less information than this proposal would be affording them. So uh, shouldn't we be concerned that this bill will make it easier for those same groups to do just that same thing, and in, but if, if not just increase their door-to-door -door voter intimidation? Mr. Chair, yes, Senator, um, the voter data that is kept by each county is already deemed by Arizona statutes to be public information that if someone pays a certain fee, you know, it's a thousandth of a cent per voter or whatever, anyone can get that data right now. But you get a much larger file that's, than what's specified in this bill. This bill says that the counties would only forward to the Secretary of State's office who would make available through a secure portal the voter name, the limited street address, and the precinct. Those are the only three things. And then the year of birth. Those are the only three thing, four things excuse me, that would be provided. There's many more things that are provided if, if anyone wants to buy the voter data file and pays the prescribed amount in current state statute, they get the full voter file. So this does not expand the publicness uh, of voter records. And I believe that this will help address what you are concerned about, Senator, that the people that were going and doing some of the canvassing of neighborhoods were using third-party softwares like Sidekick or I think the Democrats use something called, what is it? Can't, can't think of it right now, but anyway, we... Van. Uh, Van. Van. Thank you. Um, those databases are built with all kinds of other data coming into them, and I experienced myself walking door to door in the 2020 election up in, the, uh, in Yavapai County and pulling up that app on my phone and finding five, six, seven voters at an address. And when I would call in to the county recorder and say, why are five or six voters at this address? They say, that's not the official record that we keep here at the county. And if people were able to get the official record of who's registered at addresses, I think a lot of the canvassing issues that you're concerned about, which in your opinion translates into voter intimidation, would also be reduced because they wouldn't see six people registered in an address when the county's official records show that four of them moved away and we only have two or whatever the numbers are. Mr. So President, I appreciate that concern as well. But Mr. President Pro Tem, a follow-up question to this line of question? Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, Senator Senator Bennett, you know I, I have voters that are continually surprised by how much information I, I have uh, uh, before I get to their door. Uh, yeah. So then, and, and if we're in agreement that you know that there's already information that's already available, it allows me and you to go door to door. But it also currently allows those you know intimidating groups to also go door to door and harass my voters. So that's already happening right now then that kind of undercuts the idea that this bill is going to bring more transparency if we already have a lot of transparency. And then, but then I guess we're, I'm missing, we're talking about different voter intimidations. I mean, it's, it's one thing for when they come to my, to, to my neighbor's doors and, and you know, demand to know who lives there and who doesn't live there, but now they're going to be going door to door with ballot images. And that's the part that's scarier. That's the part where my voters are going to freak out. That's what I don't, I don't want my voters being put in this situation. And, and, and this bill is only going to empower those extreme groups to take ext more extreme measures. And that's what I, I, I feel like we have not really thought that part through. We may be trying to appease losers, but we're also empowering extremists to intimidate more voters. Mr. Chair, I, I guess I'll just respectfully agree to disagree. I, I don't think that uh, if the 2,000 ballot images from a given precinct uh, are available publicly that people wanting to canvas at somebody's door are going to show up with <laughs> 2,000 ballot images somehow trying to intimidate somebody that one of these must be yours and which one is it? Uh, people can go to doors and ask, are you registered to vote? Who are you, who are you planning to vote for? Um, we can ask all kinds of questions 
if somebody opens the front door and lets us ask. Those voters, though, those homeowners are also free to say, it's none of your business. And I got both when I canvassed voters uh, over the years. And uh, I, I don't think this adds any voter intimidation aspect to uh, the, the, the election will be over. And all we're trying to show is that the people who voted were eligible to vote. There was a ballot image for everyone who voted. We don't know whose is whose. And the spreadsheet that we added those ballot images on ties. That's all we're doing. Mr. President Pro Tem, Senator. my last question. Yes. If Senator Bennett will stand, yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I appreciate you know, this discussion and, and allowing us to have, have this debate and, and really flesh this out for our constituents and for everybody watching, and for everybody who's fallen asleep. Um, but uh, I, so now I, I, I want to get at the what I what I think I'm hearing is the ultimate goal of, of this proposal, and it's it, and it's something that you know I, I can agree is a need that we have to be able to give something. I guess I don't want to I don't want to give you that much. Yeah, don't agree I, with me too much. Yeah, <laughs> the, I guess I don't believe that there's going to be something that we can give to these people that's going to change their minds. I mean, we've seen so much information, so much evidence that's already been given to them. So many high level elected officials that have admitted, you know, that nothing is wrong with our elections and yet nothing seems to change. And, and I guess I can't, I can't imagine that this bill is gonna do anything for Mark Fincham or, or Kerry Lake. I, I mean, they, I don't believe that they would have conceded pre-certification if this law were, were, were in place. So, so your question is, question. Senator, what, your question is what? This, so this bill isn't going, I don't believe this bill is going to appo, uh, appease the, those two, right? Do you, but you believe this bill is going to appease those, th those people? Mr. Ch uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I believe that the lack of those fundamental four pieces of information right now, now the voter information they can already get. We can take the voter, if you, you want to take the voter information, the two voter lists out of here, we can do that in an amendment in one second. Because you're right, those voter lists are already deemed to be public information under current state law. We're simply trying to say that you release a limited amount of voter data before the election and after the election as to who was eligible and who voted so that you can make a quick determination that if, if 10,000 people are eligible to vote and 8,000 people voted, that's about what happened in the last election, 80%, that everybody on the who voted list was on the eligible to vote list. You can get that data already. So if, if striking that out, every time I solve a problem <laughs> with an amendment on this bill, there's another one. And I solve that, and there's another one. And well, I'll keep solving these problems till we get something that proves to people that the election was done right. Uh, if we have nothing to hide in elections, and I don't believe we do, then we should not be against transparency, trackability, and public verifiability. Mr. President, President, I, I, and can I end with a comment? Sure. Uh, members, I, I, I believe this, the speaker, the presenter, the sponsor of this bill, that we are going to have to keep coming back here again and again because the, the people that we are tr that are trying to be appeased with this bill, Mark Fincham, Carrie Lake, they will never accept the results of any election, no matter how much information, how much evidence we give them. <laughs> uh, and so, but because of that, I believe we can't start with this now. If we know that they're never gonna change their minds, that they're never gonna accept reality, we can't give them any of the, what's in this proposal. Uh, it, it starts us down not just a slippery slope, but it starts us down a road that we, we can't come back from. And, and I, I, I don't, I honestly do not believe democracy can survive these kinds of proposals. And because of that, I have to believe, I have to vote no. Or I'm sorry, you know, when it happens. There's a preview, yeah. I get it. Uh, Mr. Majority Leader, you're the last one up before closing comments. Yes, uh, Mr. President Pro Tem, uh, will uh, Senator Marsh yield to a question? I will say. 
Yes, I will. Yes, she will. Thank you, Mr. President Pro Tem. Uh, Senator Marsh, with the amendment on there, um, are you going to support the, the bill? Senator uh, Marsh. No, I am not. And I have told the bill's sponsor that, but I believe that part of a legislator's job is to make bills better, whether they're going to ultimately support them or not. So, thank you. Anything else? Okay. It's closing comments. Just a final comment. I uh, won't repeat what I've said, but one thing that I haven't said is that this bill does not apply retroactively. This bill only applies going forward. Uh, I'm not doing this for Carrie Lake, Mark Fincham, Abe Hamaday, or anybody. I'm doing this for the Arizona voter who was told in 2016 that a certain candidate couldn't possibly have lost to another candidate on the other side. <laughs> and then in 2020, it was the other way. And then 2022, same way. And I appreciate the Senator's comments about whether our democracy can survive. First of all, we have a republic, and I don't think our republic will survive if people continue to not have confidence that the elections were done correctly. And this bill will help move us in that direction and I encourage your support and appreciate the patience of everybody as we talk through some of these issues. All right. All right, members, the question for you is the uh, uh, Committee of the Whole Rise Reporter recommend that Senate Bill 1324 receive a due pass recommendation as amended. Those in favor, vote aye. Opposed, vote no. Appears the ayes have it, do have it. So ordered, Mr. Majority Leader. Yes.